So now we're going to bring our uh, wave file that we created into Unity so that we can hear it and hook it up to the fire that we've created previously. So um, it's easy enough to get something into Unity. All you need to do is drag and drop. So I'm gonna find my audio file that I saved out and just drag it into the uh, project window over here. So once I do that, you'll be able to see it. You can actually preview it. Okay, cool. Um, you don't really need to mess with any of these settings. You can force to mono if you want. Um, I'm sometimes. I mean, you can do this. We're not going to get too picky uh, here, but I'm just going to leave everything um, right here as default. And I'm going to find um, where I want to do this. So this fire. Okay, so the first thing to know about audio inside of Unity <clears throat> is that it needs to play out of an audio source. So if I uh, create a new level object by right clicking in the hierarchy, go to audio and click audio source right there, you'll see a little empty sound node and you can see it has a little radius across it. I'm going to position this a little bit closer to where I want it. Audio source, okay. I'll put that over here, <clears throat> um, closer to right there is good. And get that as close as you can, um, but it's it doesn't need to be super precise. So once I have this, um, one thing I want you to notice, this little radius right here, this is determining where, how far can we hear this sound? And right now, the sound actually defaults to 2D. And what that means is 2D sound, this radius doesn't really matter. It can be heard no matter how far away we are, we're gonna hear that exact audio sound. Um, and I'm actually gonna show you. So to put this, this crackle right here inside of our, our audio source that we created, so you see this fire crack, uh, this is where we imported it. This is called an audio clip. And we want this, you could think of this as the WAV file or the actual sound file on your browser. Um, and I'm actually gonna throw this into a folder called audio as well. You'll see I have other audio uh, things in here, but um, this is the one we have. And if you click on audio source, at the very top, this audio clip, this is the sound file that it wants to use. And if you click this little um, bullseye looking thing, this will just, it's a shortcut, will bring up every single audio clip inside of your project file. And then you can find it in this list if you have other ones. So I'm just gonna find fire crack. And um, right here, you'll, you'll see this here. Uh, let me walk through a few of the other settings that you might need to know. Um, actually, let me just talk about 2D and 3D right now. So 2D means that we can hear it no matter how far away we are. Um, this might be good for, let's say, level music, for example, uh, but 3D, means that we want this to be positioned in three-dimensional space. And you'll see you can actually blend there. Um, this will get kind of complicated. So for now, I just recommend going all or nothing. Like it's either 2D and it doesn't matter where the player is, or it matters entirely and it's just based off of this position in space. Um, but if I leave this as 2D and I assign the audio clip and hit play, you see how we hear this no matter where we are even if we get really close. Well, and in that case, you heard the sound stop playing. That's because it hit the end of the sound clip and did not loop. So the first thing we need to do is we need to tell it um, to loop. And you'll notice that play on awake is um, toggled by default. That's saying, I do want this sound to start playing as soon as I hit the play button. For most environmental sounds, you do want, like we want these to always be playing. Um, and you can actually play these on awake. I recommend for environmental sounds, more often than not, you do want play on awake and you do want loop. So I'm gonna play this again. Actually, um, just just to show. So right now, if if we hear this sound and it hits the end, it will loop and it will play on awake, so we're good to go there. Now I wanna show you 3D sound. If I drag this little spatial blend all the way over to 3D, you'll see that we don't hear it now. And even if we were to get close, over this way, we're barely, barely starting to hear it now, right? And you'll notice even more so that, that that sound gets louder as our camera gets closer, not necessarily the player. This is because our level, our audio listener, which you can think of as 
our ears and the level are actually on the camera right here, this audio listener. Um, and so this is what's determining how loud the sound is in 3D sound. So the closer this camera gets to this audio listener, the louder we're going to hear it. And let's say that that's pretty intended for what we want. Um, and in this case, we just want to adjust the radius. Right now, the, the minimum distance is one and the maximum distance is 500. Um, maybe we want the minimum distance to be a little bit, a little bit bigger right here. You'll see a, um, uh, as we drag this, our radius gets bigger. Um, just make sure that, make sure that our, uh, where's our maximum distance going? Uh, 3D. Weird, that's not showing for me. Um, anyways, just make sure that you turn this up. This minimum distance, this is going to control when, uh, when we start hearing the sound at all. Um, and I'm going to make sure that that's just a little bit louder. Let's, let's put that, um, Actually, just just to keep this um, pretty consistent, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that back down at one, and put the max distance at let's say, I don't know what's good, one thousand. Oh, and you see that that's way 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 out there, right? I'm gonna drag this in. Maybe that was too big. Maybe we overdid it. Um. Oh, here we go. So I, it was just my distance was way too big. So the, the minimum distance is when our, when our camera is inside of our minimum distance, it's going to be max volume. So maybe I wanna crank this out just a little bit. Let's say, um, let's say three, actually let's say five. And our maximum distance is, if we're at all inside of this, we'll be able to hear it. If we're outside of this, we will not hear it at all. And I, I think this is probably good. Let's actually put that at 10 and see what that feels like. You see, I'm already starting to hear it. That's probably too loud. So I'm actually going to tweak this back down. One and five. Maybe you can kind of hear it just a tiny little bit. You'll see it's also positioned in space as well. Um, as, a, as a final tweak, I'm actually going to leave this at one, and I think three is going to cover it. Um, but, you know, if you have a really big fire, you might want this to be much, much bigger, and it, it all depends. And so at this point, um, we can take our audio source, and if we put this underneath the torch, like that, you know, make sure this is the right. Oh, and this is not the right torch. Okay, good. Good thing that I caught that. Um, make sure that you find the torch that this is you know, associated with. Take your audio source, put that underneath the torch like that. And then um, once you have this, if I hit apply, this is going to apply to all of the other torches in our scene. So right, we're editing the prefab and we're saying, I want this audio source to be associated with the other ones as well. Or you can manually go through and place those, but I don't recommend it. But play, or sorry, apply up here. This will say, it. this is the new, Prefab, so now when we click on our torch over there, you'll see that that will also have an audio effect. So if we hit play now, have one over there. And you see that that might still be too loud because I really want to hear it if I just get, get kind of close. Um, so, I, you know, you, you could keep tweaking this if you want. Um, and if I were to change the settings on this, let's say I did want this to be a little uh, less loud and I'm gonna do, um, I don't know, 0.5 and two. And doing that, if I want this to propagate to the other ones, don't forget that you need to actually apply the prefab so that all the torches get these changes. And maybe that's a little bit better. Um, you, you can keep playing that, playing with that if you want, but I don't recommend getting too overboard with this. Um, right now, we just want basic representation and I, I want to see that you can um, do this stuff, but make sure that when you're capturing video, you start capturing it with audio so that we can hear uh, what you've been doing here. So at this point, you can, I mean, you can do a pass if you want, but uh, I really just want to see that you can implement an emitter, a 3D sound emitter inside of a level. Make sure that it's 3D and not 2D. Um, but you could actually make another 2D right here. 
if you were to make a um, audio source 2D, and you make sure that that's 2D right here, if you were to assign an ambient level music clip or um, just ambience or something that is just always playing in the background to help create mood, you could do that on this audio source. And then I recommend that you call this um, music player or something. And, and that about covers it for implementing sound. I think with this, you should be able to just experiment and, um, and you know, do little uh, sound effects here and there. Just give your, give your level a general uh, ambience. Um, but at least have these little torches covered.